Residents of the Wellington Heights neighborhood in Cedar Rapids have faced a number of challenges when it comes to crime and rebuilding the community. Tonight, there is good news on both fronts. CBS 2 News reporter Marissa Scott shows us how a local nonprofit delivered on a promise made to Wellington Heights a few years ago. And Jason Hackett begins with a major step in solving a local shooting investigation. Jason. Yeah, Scott, police say back in September, 19-year-old Elijah Morse shot at a home while people were sitting outside on their porch. It sent many people into the neighborhood into a panic. It even sent several local schools on a lockdown. Tonight, say police, say police say because of some good old-fashioned police work and you at home, there's one less alleged criminal on the streets. September 22nd. God forbid, you know, myself or my daughter caught one of those stray bullets. It's a day many wanted to forget. I really am to the point where I've thought about moving out of the neighborhood. So police say arresting 19-year-old Elijah Morse meant everything. He was involved in, in taking a shot at, a pe at some people's house. Could have uh, ended up tragic. Um, and we're glad that he's off the street. The Northern Iowa Fugitive Task Force, which took Morse down, is made up of local, state, and federal agencies, each branch bringing something to the table. Cedar Rapids brings a, a lot of local knowledge to the area. The, the Marshal Service, we bring a, a longer reach. Um, you've heard of the long arm of the law. It's kind of that's the way it is. They can help us reach out and find these people when we need to. And it's not just reach. Each side provides the manpower and specialized skills needed to crack oh, cases like this one. We also bring guys that are very good at interviewing and talking to people and, and getting information from them. That partnership between agencies helps, but the partnership between agencies and the community is just as important. In fact, it was a result of community members coming forward and working with law enforcement to ultimately apprehend Mr. Morse. Even though one dangerous suspect is off the street, law enforcement knows there's more work to do. Work they say they can't continue to do without you. You know, the police are the community and the community are the police. And when the community de decides it's enough and they tell us that they're really going to start being successful. Now tonight, Scott Morse sits in the Lynn County Jail. He's being charged with intimidation with a dangerous weapon and going armed with intent. Police say he could face more charges. We're covering the corridor tonight in Cedar Rapids. Jason Hackett, CBS 2 News, 10 at 10.